It is time to season this and fire this up. All right, so I just got the brand new Kingsford Stockade 49 smoker and griller, and I did an assembly video, which you can see right up there, uh, and I walked you through not every part of assembling it, but parts that uh, I got hung up on or stuck on that I want to share with you. So check that out if you're thinking about getting the smoker. One of the main things I want to do today is walk you through real quick how to season this and get it going. All right. I just spent the past three hours on YouTube watching all these different seasoning videos. All right. Because the manual that it provides you with, there is a little bit of misinformation, I think, in there. But I saw all types of different ways to season an offset smoker. And I got to tell you, some of them, I'm scratching my head about, and I hope people in the comments can help me, especially with oiling on the outside. I saw that in a few videos. Some people use WD-40 on an Oklahoma Joe. Some people still used uh, vegetable oil. I'd never seen that before, so I was a bit thrown back. We're gonna keep it easy, all right? We're gonna use a spray of canola oil, and we're just gonna spray everything in here and, take out, the only thing we're gonna take out is the charcoal firebox before we spray. And we're just gonna coat everything in here with canola oil. Before you get spraying, I want you to get your charcoal chimney going so that it can get really hot and you don't have to spray this whole thing and then light your fire. So as soon as I'm finished spraying, this is gonna be ready to go. Now, if you didn't see my video on the biggest mistake I've ever read, that I'm gonna put right there, Yes, in the instructions, in the manual, they say to use lighter fluid. Don't ever do that. Watch that video. There's two ways, well, there's a couple ways, but charcoal chimney is one. The second way is a propane or some type of propane torch that you can use right on the side of your firebox to get it fired up. That's the only way I light my logs and I recommend you do the same. Okay, now it's time to spray. Step one, they tell you don't coat the charcoal grate. All right, that's the item all the way at the bottom. I'm about to remove that. Then they say don't spray the grids. There's no other place in this manual where I see grids listed. I see great, but no other place. I think they're referring to the grates, even though they don't literally say that. Now, the way these grates are uh, nice and coated, they're really nice and coated. I don't believe you need to spray them anyway. So I'm gonna keep them out when I take the grate out. They also say you don't need to spray the charcoal ashtray, but they also call this a charcoal basket. So I'm assuming this is what they're talking about by charcoal ashtray, even though there's nowhere else listed in this manual, charcoal ashtray. So these are the things I'm going to remove. Now I definitely think this is the grate they were actually referring to. Uh, they say you don't need to spray it. My guess there is as you cook and grease falls onto this, it will give a natural coating over time. Uh, you could probably spray it right away and it won't hurt it, but I wanna get the base of this anyway, so I'm taking it out. Now, once again, from the videos I've seen, some people do spray in the firebox, some people don't. Uh, for me, I said, what the heck, I might as well just give it a try. If this all catches up in big flames in a minute, you'll know not to do that. All right, two things real quick. One, uh, I thought when I bought this on Amazon, I was getting a deal because it was a $15 uh, charcoal chimney. It was a very small charcoal chimney when I got it and it only does a limited amount of charcoal. However, we are finding out how hot this gets, how quickly, or we're about to. So I don't mind starting off with a little bit of charcoal and building from here. If I did have a bigger charcoal chimney that fit a heck of a lot more, uh, then maybe I'd only wanna fill it up halfway because I wanna start small and then build up from there.
So I'm gonna close the lid. I'm gonna close the door. And let's, uh, this is still getting started, so I'm gonna keep the damper all the way open and let me close the main lid here and start to see what type of temperatures we get. We have a little canola oil dripping down off here. And as the charcoal sits on the bottom, after it falls through the ashtray, it uh, not only is catching some of the canola oil, but it's also uh, any type of residual paint. You know, hot spots, this type of smoker, it's going to eat away at the paint at some point. So if you get your whole firebox real hot at some point, which I will, oh damn, that was hot to the touch, um, you'll start to see some, some rust form, some paint chip away. I can't tell if this is painted or what yet, uh, but my old one, the black paint just came off and that's some of the stuff we're going to talk about in our Facebook group, how to restore when stuff chips away, breaks away, what's good material, what's good sprays to get out there. You can also see, I don't know if it's an optical illusion with the, the angle. I need to get this on a flat surface. I might put brick in and obviously you can see that's very makeshift with the jack but for me it just looks a little bit slanted and i want to prevent as the metal heats up any more dipping or slanting so i put that jack in there uh, like i showed you in the assembly video because i really don't want to have major sloping in that firebox to where after you know, this is kind of my pride and joy when people come over, once we're finally allowed to have people over, my pride and joy to have this as a centerpiece, right? What you smoking on here? This thing looks awesome. That's what I'm like, you know, part of, part of the smoking experience is being able to brag about what you got. And the last thing you want is that smoke box to be like, Ugh. All right, so it's been literally probably two and a half minutes. We're already at 200 degrees. We're supposed to get to 250 and let it stay there for two hours. And then the last hour, we're supposed to add more fuel, charcoal or wood to spike it up to 400 degrees. Uh, so we're going to see how long this takes to get to 250. My guess is probably four minutes, which is pretty darn good. And as I showed you, that is not a lot of charcoal in there and it's pumping off that type of heat so start with little or start with less and then increase from there you sprayed oil in your firebox obviously make sure to have something ready to catch it if it's a uh, on concrete or your driveway the other important thing is have your fire glove ready i'm going to try to damper this down for the first time just to see if that maintains a slow heat uh, but obviously touching that with your finger is a bad idea. So make sure you have good gloves ready to go or some type of, you know, tongs or anything metal to hit that back and forth. All right, so we're right at 220. Uh, when I shut the damper down halfway, it stopped right at 200 and stayed there for like five minutes, no problem. Uh, so I added some more charcoal and I opened up the damper just to start getting that heat back up. Uh, and cause we want to get to 250, which is right there. And this is just a, a burn off. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to put, I have a six probe thermometer and I'm going to put it throughout the entire smoker to see what spots have the hottest uh, what spots are the coolest on the grill and to see if this says 250 or 300 uh, but at the grill level it's really smoking at 2 200 205 how much variance from up here from the grill level uh, so we're going to be doing that in a later video oh 
obviously we oiled all this up. Something interesting that happened is, you know, I wanted to maintain distance between my wall. Uh, apparently oil is getting spurted out all over my siding, which isn't the end of the world. I'm, we're probably painting this in the next year or two, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, but it is something to consider. Isn't that crazy? So it's spurting out. The pressure is just having it fly out. Oh well, these things happen. Just rolling with it. Okay, it's been two hours between 225 and 250, and we had a short spike there of 300. But this third hour, so second hour going into the third, you're supposed to keep it, pump it up to 400 degrees. So we're going to do that right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up these vents, but I also want to get some real smoke on it, not just charcoal smoke. So I'm going to put a piece of wood in there, not just to crank up the temperature, but to see what the rolling smoke will actually do and where it will pour out and all that stuff. Stay tuned. All right, now we got some smoke rolling. It's not completely white and fluffy, which you don't want, so that's a good thing. As far as the seal goes, obviously, uh, there's smoke leaking. There hasn't been any smoke leaking from here, but on the bottom, you're gonna have smoke loss on this. All right, and this is the other thing we talked about. Remember how I said we might have some loss? Uh, but it's very manageable. It's not, I probably actually, you know, it's still early days. I don't see myself making a, any adjustments there just because th that's pretty livable. Here's another thing, when you put a little pressure down, not that you're gonna hold your smoker like this all day, but you can just see how that tightens up and all that smoke is now coming out of there. Uh, so, you know, maybe I'll s apply a second gasket on the bottom there just to see if that double up effect does anything for it. But you gotta love that look. I don't know if I can get a good... All right, so now we got that wood going. Temperature's slowly climbing. We'll keep an eye on it. See, I think that's pretty manageable smoke loss. Your meat inside is still going to get, look at that. You're still going to get a ton of smoke. All right, let's check on this piece of wood. So it hasn't totally caught yet, but it will in a minute. It's been running at 400. Uh, I'm about to throttle it down. Uh, as you can see, the charcoal bedding is doing a really good job of controlling the fire. Like I said, I'm historically not a charcoal guy. Uh, you can't see any smoke coming out right now, but it was going for a long time. Uh, since um, it's been going at 400 long enough, what I'm going to do now is damper this down to see how quickly the temperature will start dropping. Once we're done with that, uh, I'm going to open up everything. Or actually, let me show that to you now. So you can see just lots and lots of good smoke. Your, your food's gonna get covered, immersed with a good smoke flavor. But this is uh, you know, the finish of our seasoning project. Next, we're gonna move on to temperature in our next video different temperature probes in different spots. And you can just see all that smoke coming out. Let's close it for a second, open it up one last time and then wrap up this video. All right, in three, two, one. Yeah, I mean, your food's just gonna be, you don't have to worry about the leaks, the small little leaks. I don't see any, I didn't see any coming out of that problem spot we had in the assembly video. Uh, the stuff coming out of here, you're still going to get plenty. And like I said, I haven't seen any coming out of there. All right, we're going to wrap this up. I will see you guys soon with the next video on this Kingsford Stockade 49.
Have a good one.